You see, and then she went from screaming, bucking her eyes, looking at him screaming, talking about no, just just in the damn, just just a series, just back, back, back. And she just said nothing, just flat line, got quiet, stopped staring off. So they got to the restaurant. Of course, he's scared because he don't know what the fuck happened and, and why was she looking at him, what, what kind of flashback was she was having. So, so he had to make up an excuse to actually leave her. I was like, you left her? He's like, I didn't know what to do. I just, I, I lied. I, I, I told my, my homeboy, he said, I had to go to the bathroom. I got on the phone. I told him to call me at a certain time so that that would be an excuse for me to go, get up and leave like it was an emergency. He said, man, you go call me. As soon as I get in a few minutes, I want you to call me. So he, the guy calls him, and he's like, damn. He, you know, I think he gave her the money to get the food. He's like, I got to go. I said, you just left her. He said, I left her. Now, that is a perfect example of somebody having a fracture, somebody having a mind fracture. And many times people's minds will do that, especially women, because we endure a whole bunch of trauma. Many of us never tell anybody the trauma because we're too embarrassed and we're too hurt and we don't know how people are going to judge us, if they're going to laugh or look down on us or call us stupid. So we're good at pushing stuff down and acting like it doesn't exist or something wrong with us. It's not the person that did it to us. It must be something about us to make the person do it. And in order for people to survive, they their mind has to shift and create the different personalities because if their mind had to deal with all of it at one time, many women would go crazy. Many women would kill themselves, kill their children, kill everybody in the house, burn the house up, shoot somebody at the post office. That's what's going on a lot of times when people snap because you don't know how long that person's had the fracture and how many times or how many years they've been suppressing some trauma, some vaginal or some anal or some oral trauma that their mamas and every other grown person say it wasn't important and doesn't matter. And that's the same thing that happens because that kind of abuse ties into disrespecting yourself and disrespecting your period and not knowing the power of your period. I'm going to read this email that this lady sent to me. And it definitely stood out to me because I could relate to what she's saying because I felt the same kind of stuff. And it's really sad that a lot of us feel this type of pain inside of us and we go through the traumas really early but we don't discuss it, and nobody explains it to us because it's like this whole time, while, while I was on the phone with this lady, almost two hours, she kept saying, but they say I'm crazy, but they say I'm crazy, and they say I'm stupid. Am I stupid? Am I crazy? Do you think that? I'm like, no, I'm just glad that you're starting to realize what the pain is about and realize you have the personality and the drama because now we're going to start from here. I'm going to show you how you need to heal it, and that's why I brought that up to tie into this show because it also ties into women hating their period and being exposed to men that teach us to hate it. It says, hey, Alexis, I listened to your show last night, Nigger Dick, part one. It triggered a lot of my negative past experiences with a certain relationship I had with this certain man. It was full of emotional abuse and verbal abuse. When I personally examined that situation, every time I was around him, I felt disgusted and drained. He would always make negative comments about my body, how I talk, how I drive a car. The most painful thing that truly hurt me at that time was how he made me feel ashamed to be a woman is when we had sex this particular time, and my menstrual cycle started, and I started bleeding while we were having sex. He jumped up, and he was so disgusted by me bleeding, and he just acted like it was so sick, made him so sick to his stomach. He stated that he doesn't like to be around women when they own their period. Alexis, can you tell me why so many men are disgusted by this issue? This is something that is natural. This is, is it, is it, or let me make sure I'm reading this right. This is something that is natural. This is actually when I started having issues with my body. Wow. It makes perfect sense to me 
because a lot of us have had the experience where we didn't know when our period was coming on and we didn't keep up with a particular date and we didn't mark the dates on the calendar and we might have been in the middle of sexual intercourse and our period came on. But if it's a man that is really sensitive to women and he really cares about you and he knows that having a period is something natural and it's not nasty and defiled when he sees well a lot of men that like to screw women when they on their period because it's slippery and the blood is hot and they actually get off and enjoy having sex with a woman on her period so they are not going to degrade the woman for it there are men there are women that like to have sex when they're on their period too because it helps them relieve the cramping it actually helps to uh, relax the uterus when a woman's having sex and she has sexual has an orgasm, so a lot, a lot of women, I mean, I wouldn't do it because it's, it, it, and that it is nasty in that sense because there are viruses and bacteria in our blood. So if that woman has HIV or, or any other virus that she's carrying and, and the man is exposed to raw blood, then that is really not sanitary. But the period itself is not unsanitary. It is a natural process. That is the way the gods speak to women <laughs> that is the way that they transfer and transmit divine telepathic communication and genetic memory activation through a woman's period if she didn't have a period then he wouldn't have been able to lay there and fuck her he wouldn't have been able to take his penis and penetrate her vagina for her rivers of living waters to flow out of her that is an extension of the rivers of living water that a baby grows in when they're inside of a woman's uterus. So, yes, you, you have the fluid that the baby is living in and getting its limbs and getting its life and being resuscitated and being reanimated again into the third dimensional realm because this ain't the first time we came here, but then... It is also about the activation of that reanimation of that embryo that must take place in the blood. That sperm has to meet that egg, and there is blood exchange. Everything, the electro, the blood, see, I have to do a show about that in the blood, the power of blood. And I wrote it down in my book that I'm going to be releasing because there's an electromagnetic field that is ingrained in the matrix of blood. And within that electromagnetic field is the very mindset of all of the ancestors and entities that brought you into this existence and that are desiring to be reanimated, to actually be resurrected through your body or through the body of the being that is being created. Because when a man and a woman has sex and a child is being created, they have to tap into that blood base, but a very powerful trinity is being created to be able to shock that electromagnetic grid in place and to cause that man nuts to explode so that sperm travels down her passageway to go into her galaxy send those star seeds and that sperm into her galaxy, and they have got to tap into the woman's bloodline. And if she does not have a menstrual cycle, that trinity is not going to be set up because he will electrify her womb with sperm. But all that sperm is going to do is go up in her womb, down, ping, 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 bounce off walls, die, and slide back down. It ain't because it cannot have no kind of sexual, spiritual, electromagnetic communication in her womb to bring about a trinity if that woman has no eggs in there and if she does not have a menstrual cycle that is flowing from her. And we even talk, you know, being around women, I remember growing up and women not being around, they still don't teach us how to wash ourselves properly and to eat properly while we have a period. Because you know what, to, to be honest with you, when I have my period now that I know better and I know who I am, I don't be around nobody. I don't be around that many people because I know 
that when I have a period, that's a very powerful time in the universe for me. 